Welcome back to All Things ETH. My name is Aaron and on this channel we talk about all things Ethereum. We talk about projects, NFTs, play to earn, DeFi, and price. And today I want to get into perpetual and uh, derivative trading and uh, not because I want to be a trader but because I want to be a liquidity provider because I feel like uh, making the uh, transaction fees and liquidation fees in these decentralized uh, DEXs is a very good investment as there's going to be plenty of DGENs trying to make um, some crazy gains in trades and I'd rather be the liquidity provider than the uh, the person under stress trying to make gains on the trade side so um, let's jump into a couple things first of all <clears throat> I love GMX right now um, GMX has been out for a little while I think just over a year maybe maybe less um, Personally, what I'm doing here is providing GLP. So if you go to GMX, and um, I'll actually uh, put a referral link in the description below, get you straight here. Um, but uh, what I like about GMX is you have basically two assets. You have the GMX token, which does make 7.77% um, APR currently, but also GLP. GMX is the token, the uh, governance token. Um, you can stake it and get voting GMX, right? But uh, GLP is the liquidity token or adds to the liquidity of the trading space inside of GM GMX. So uh, the, the, <laughs> the ETH APR alone is 19.27% on GLP right now. It's been as high as, you know, 22%, somewhere in that nature. It just depends on who's, uh, what sort of... Um, liquidity is provided, uh, how many people are trading volume wise and what the fees look like and if there's any um, mega liquidations we get some extra um, boost in the in the APR but um, you could also stake uh, I think actually I take that back I believe um, your GLP is essentially staked automatically um, I don't think there's any way to uh, yeah there's a there's a GLP vault um, but I don't think, let me, let me just connect my wallet. <clears throat> so I don't actually hold my GLP inside of GMX. I've found other places. We'll talk about that in a little bit here uh, about how and why, but all of this is on Arbitrum guys. Um, no other chain has uh, GMX at the moment, although I'm sorry, uh, Avalanche does. So if you're an AVAX fan, I do have some um, GMX assets over in Avalanche, but I'm mostly in Arbitrum. Um, okay, so you can, let's see, what if I hit stake here? No, it's ES GMX. Um, there's the GLP vault. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Um, so it's looking for ES GMX here as well. So you're not actually putting in um, GLP into any of these vaults. I believe it's auto staked essentially for you and you do make um, some uh, vault rewards so you get some GMX in or escrow GMX I believe um, rewards from holding uh, GLP. So um, now what is GLP? <clears throat> GLP is what's it made of? It's made of um, about 50% uh, stable coins and then about, uh, what was it? I think it's like 30% ETH and another 20% uh, wrapped Bitcoin. So some pretty solid assets there. I like the fact that it's not all uh, stablecoin related. Um, although making 20% on stables is ins would be insane. Um, now we'll, we'll talk about another protocol that might get you that or might get you close. At least it's gonna start a little higher than that. So that's pretty cool, but it's, it's a startup right now and um, hasn't proven itself like GMX has so far so um, what I like about uh, the APRs here is you get yeah 19.27 percent in uh, ETH rewards that's not paid in in other you know tokens it's not paid in GLP it's paid in ETH and then um, <clears throat> you also get escrow GMX and uh, more ETH rewards down here um, for uh, holding GLP. So um, pretty awesome. You can go trade if you want. Um, I'm not a big trader guys. I, I've done that in the past. 
um, I've found better ways to make, uh, let's say, I, I, I will occasionally trade if I, if I think there's a really good opportunity, but for the most part, I'm not trading and uh, would recommend you, um, you not do that. I mean, this is not financial advice. Do what you want. You know, do your own research. Whatever you got to do. There is, there's leverage trading up to 50x leverage on GMX. And this is what makes the uh, GLP uh, liquidity, liquidity providers the most money. The, the more the leverage, the more likely you are to have fees. And the most, more likely um, somebody is to get wrecked. And I don't want to, I don't recommend you get wrecked. I don't recommend any get wrecked. But, um, you know, if you're, if you're playing the system, you, you could win big, you could lose big. And I'd rather be the one <coughs> holding the liquidity and, and making the rewards than the one losing, um, having big swings. You know what I'm saying? So, um, what do I do with my GMX or GLP? Uh, well, whether you know it or not, <coughs> Excuse me, I've got a cold, guys. Pardon, pardon me. Um, whether you know it or not, uh, GLP actually has a liquidity, um, uh, like an LP token. Doesn't show up in your wallet. Um, I don't think. I, let me let me go to Arbitrum Scan and actually see if GLP shows up. <clears throat> don't think it does. I think I've done this before. <clears throat> Just to be sure. Stick GLP. Okay, SGLP does show up. So let's... Um, I'm going to put this in my wallet. It's not something that auto hops into your wallet. So let's put it in there. And I'll show you how you do this. You go to Arbiscan, You um, There's a little button next to the contract address, right? And then you go down to the bottom. Actually, go to Assets first. Then you go to the bottom. Import Tokens. You uh, paste that in there, and then it should auto uh, put in the SGLP in the token decimal, and then you import that. So that'll be nice to see. I I haven't done that before, and I really didn't know that uh, staked GLP, and that actually confirms that GLP is actually staked when you um, when you purchase it. So um, and you purchase it with USDC. Let's let's just do, show you real quick what that looks like. So um, you go to the if you go to GMX right away, it'll take you, you know, probably outside the app actually just to like their website. But then if you go to earn, you can buy GLP right here. You can also swap it. Um, I believe, and no, I don't, I don't, I take that back. I think you cannot, you might be able to swap it, but um, I believe the only place to get it is actually on GMX. So um, you can buy it with ETH. You can actually buy it with any of these assets. Um, they actually give you, if you go to the doc, or uh, I think there's a way to see what actually gives you the best price. Because um, each asset is different depending on how much, yeah, it's right here actually. So um, sometimes there's fees involved. Um, it looks like it's all open right now. I don't know why it's not populating that. Let me see if there's, if I refresh. In the past, I've seen some fees uh, related to this, and um, if you, uh, I think this is just because I don't have anything else in my wallet right now besides ETH, that would be uh, collateral, but um, typically they want to incentivize you to buy more, um, so they'll do a smaller fee on the assets that you would um that you have that would be a better option for them to hold. So um, there's, you know, these weights here. So um, there's more ETH than anything else. Be oh, well, there's plenty of DAI. So um, still more ETH than anything else. Plenty of DAI, uh, plenty of USDC. It looks like uh, USDC is pretty low right now in the pool here. I wonder if they, because of the... Uh, possible regulation going on that they switched wouldn't be surprised if that was higher yesterday um, anyway that's nor, neither here nor there right now so let's get back into what I do with my GLP <clears throat> well as soon as I buy it in GMX in the uh, earn tab I go buy it here buy GLP um, put some ETH in or some USDC or whatever I want to uh, 
transferred to GLP, shows up in my wallet, auto stakes, right? Um, and then you can go and take it in a, in a couple of places. So one thing, one place I li love to take it is actually <clears throat> into uh, into uh, uh, sentiment. So sentiment is a loaning platform. Um, I come from a world where margin is a big part of uh, you know making your gains higher. I'm not a not a big uh, might not be like a 10x trader, but I'm gonna go uh, put make some margin with with the uh, equity that I have in my token. So I'm gonna put um, some ETH in here, preferably like wrap staked ETH. I'm gonna go to my account and just show you. So I've got some wrap staked ETH in here. I've got uh, a regular wrapped ETH as well. I should probably switch that to wrap staked ETH so it's actually making rewards while it's sitting here doing nothing. But I think I purchased it in here, so I think I bought um, what it did was put in some wrap staked ETH and then borrowed some USDC and bought and like swapped it within sentiment. You can swap and purchase essentially more um, wrapped ETH. Well, that's that's what I was doing and I've I've traded it a little bit back and forth, paid down my loan a little bit and and that was that was what I was originally doing in sentiment. Well, sentiment just released um, SGLP as an option to actually purchase within um you're you're sort of purchasing it you're you're um what you're doing is is investing in it within the platform so glp is now in this uh category where <clears throat> if you bring assets into your account and you can bring i believe you can bring sglp directly into it so you could go in to uh gmx you know purchase glp come into uh, sentiment, go to your account, manage your account assets, and possibly um, find, you know, GLP on this. I don't have any GMX um, currently, but you may be able to like bring some of this stuff into uh, to Arbitrum or uh, Sentiment on Arbitrum in here. But um, what I did was. I put some wrapped stick ETH in here. I borrowed uh, USDC in particular, and then I went into the invest tab and I purchased a bunch of uh, GLP. So um, knowing that GLP makes a 19% APR currently within uh, sentiment, but also within uh, GMX, right? <coughs> and uh, because it's not just built out of stables, I'm also exposed to the market a little bit, which I think is cool. I, I'd rather be exposed to some appreciating assets than you know, an inflationary asset like uh, like USD. So that's one place that you can bring, um, you know, bring GLP or invest in GLP. I think it's pretty cool because not only am I um, making gains on these wrapped, uh, you know, liquid. Uh, staking derivatives of Ethereum that will hopefully appreciate as the Ethereum uh, chain appreciates, and uh, you know, with with a new bull run in in uh, Bitcoin, ETH will follow obviously, and really ETH should lead the way now that it's deflationary. But um, I'm not going to get into that argument right now. But um, as ETH is more def uh, more valued. And has a lot of value. I mean, it's it's we're sitting at uh, you know fourteen fifty right now, um, one thousand four hundred fifty dollars relatively um, on today. Um, it's worth money, so you can borrow against it, right? Just like you could take out a loan um, against the equity you have in your house. You can do the same thing in uh, sentiment, essentially, and uh, borrow against and uh, stack your rewards, essentially. So so what I'm doing is using my uh, equity to borrow some USDC and and buying more assets that are going to appreciate in value on top of it to kind of compound those gains and that's something you can do in um, larger investment accounts so I've done that in um, you know in my uh, portfolios on you know E-Trade and in these sorts of places um, and uh, 
it's helped there to be able to grow my accounts sooner. It also will um, <clears throat> can shrink your accounts faster as well. So you got to be careful that you're not. Um, I was doing it with options, margin with options, and that can be pretty rough on you if you do it wrong. So uh, just be careful out there. It's not a not investment advice, just a, um, entertainment and education, right? So do your own research. Well, what's another place where you can put GLP, your SGLP? And this is actually my favorite one, although I love sentiment because I'm using the equity that's built into my, my ETH, my LSDs, um, and getting being able to compound rewards, that's one place you can do it. But if I was just going to take GLP out of GMX, use that liquidity token for more gains, it's um, another new-ish platform called Olive. It used to be called Polysynth, but um, Olive is similar to Ribbon Finance, where you are uh, using DeFi Options Vaults. But the cool thing about the GLP vault in particular is that it is uh, it is a very low risk because it's it's similar to the Earn product inside of um, in Ribbon, where it's a twin win um, options vault. It's uh, it's for one, it's only taking the yield that you're getting on your GLP to risk in the vault, so you're actually not losing principal. Um, so it's taking that 20% rewards and putting it into the options contract, and then you uh, not only get your APY um, <clears throat> from GLP staking, but you also get the boosted APY, so it's, a, it's about a 10% boost, maybe even more 13% boost right now. Um, by uh, playing um, the the options game essentially by uh, using a principal protected um, what do they call it here um, risk uh, there's no 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 principal or credit risk because you're not using the underlying asset you're actually using the APY um, let's actually go back to, out to Olive and show you what their other vaults look like so they've been doing uh, cover call and uh, they call them like price drop and ETH cash covered. Um, these things are tr more traditional, uh, you know, DeFi options vaults. And I haven't used any of them, to be honest with you, because I found this one um, to be more to my liking, principal protected vault. And um, I, I had to go into the docs to figure out exactly what they're doing. But I believe it's a like a 6% um, twin win, you know, if, if the price of the asset goes up 6% or goes down 6%, um, <coughs> you know, you'd, you'd lose, you know, the the, the contract or you'd, you'd be in the money, right? Well, this this GLP doesn't move very much because, I mean, there there is some exposure to Bitcoin and Ethereum, but it's very, you know, it's 50% it's of the asset is, is Bitcoin or Ethereum, and so that halves essentially the uh, the volatility <clears throat> because the other half of the uh, the GLP token is in stables. So if Ethereum moves 10%, you're really only exposed to about 5% of the move in GLP. In fact, you're um, in less because um, you know with when. Honestly, when when Ethereum moves 10%, Bitcoin's only moving like 6%, maybe 7%, um, typically. So you're not seeing huge volatility just because uh, you know Bitcoin's so big now. It's not it's not doing a 10% a gain in a day. Typically, you know, maybe when the bull run starts, I'll I'll scale out of this just because we might see a little bit more volatility in those assets. But I still don't think in a weekly basis we're going to see more than a 10% move. And uh, because this, I believe it's covered 6% up, 6% down. And then on top of it, they actually do like a little insurance, like another 2% insurance um, sort of hedge on this principle protected uh, uh, option strategy. So you're really, really safe. In fact, it's got a 100% success rate so far, which has not been the case um, in other uh, principle protected or so-called principle protected options vaults that I've used in the past in other platforms. Um, but uh, it's also using beefy finance. So um, the risks here are, guys, that obviously GLPs um, 
has some uh, smart contract risk inside of uh, GMX. And then there's also um, some contract risk inside of Olive Finance, but then there's also uh, smart contract risk inside of Beefy. So you're compounding your, uh, your uh, smart contract risk by putting it like this liquidity token in multiple contracts and um, so far so good uh, you know there was a little bit of a um, a point this weekend where my my portfolio actually said like zero and I think the you can still see it here yeah this this there's a bit of time where I haven't I didn't have any assets in my uh, my account um, showing in the uh, the portfolio section but thankfully if you go to the vaults and you go into them and then you can like if you hit withdraw you can actually see your um, available balance to with withdraw so you know it, at least it's there but there was a little bit of a scare <laughs> when I woke up uh, yesterday to find this vault uh, saying that I didn't have any assets in it so I was a little bit worried but um, this this program also has a referral bonus so you do you can um, I don't know if there's any fees necessarily involved um, with GMX. When you use the referral code, it actually gives the uh, person getting the referral or using the referral um, lower fees on trading and other things. Um, uh, with Olive, I think you're just your referral is getting you more of a chance to win certain things inside of. Uh, all of, and you're just telling people about it. The the person using your referral link, I don't think, gets an actual um, an actual uh, like advantage necessarily. But at least you're telling them about it because all of is a pretty small pro, uh, uh, platform. In fact, TVL is not super high. Let's go into DeFi Llama and actually look this up. So let's go. <clears throat> I'm gonna back this up. Actually, um, we're gonna talk about other derivative uh, TVLs in a second. So let's go to a different tab on DeFi Llama real quick and then look up um, Olive. All right, so Olive, yeah, 2.7 million TVL, um, not super high. That's, you know, I wouldn't call that like ultra low cap in crypto, but uh, definitely um, a mid cap. Um, if you're familiar with those terms, um, a lot of room to grow, definitely, um, Definitely uh, airdrop farming on this one, guys, too. Um, same with Sentiment. Both of these platforms don't have a token yet. Sentiment. Uh, um, let's look at TVL there as well. 2.7 in Olive. 13 million in Sentiment. So quite a bit bigger. Um, but, uh, you know, because it's a... Um, I would expect more TVL and sentiment uh, based on, and look at this growth. Oh, that's been fantastic. Really great growth over the last, I mean, we're at nearly the same TVL. I'm going to double up over to the TVL back in December of uh, 22 in sentiment to, the, to that of Olive, and we've grown quite a bit. So look out. Um, I don't know if there will be an airdrop, but... Uh, you know, might as well give it a, a shot. And there's some great stuff that you can do, especially with GMX and GLP inside of Sentiment already. So why not give it a shot, right? And in fact, I haven't found any other places um, yet uh, that are really great with the rewards on uh, on on GLP. So the reason why I like Sentiment is not. I mean, you're getting the same uh, APY actually. That you would inside of just staking inside of GMX with with GLP in sentiment, but the cool thing about it is that compounding. So I'm actually not. I didn't actually have to purchase any GLP with assets that I own. I purchased GLP with assets that I borrowed, using the equity that I had in my uh, my staked ETH. Right. So that's why um, that's why I use sentiment in particular. But then um, any GLP that I purchased directly from uh, from GMX I'm going to put into Olive because of that awesome sweet sweet gains the 33% uh, is you know 10 to 14% to on top of um, I mean look at this uh, Vault APY 28% plus uh, Olive Boost if you have some Olive tokens you get you can boost it too so 
man, get in there. Get in there. So, um, I don't know, you know, Olive Boost, I don't even actually know if that's a thing. I, don't, I have to look into that. So, I'll, I'll come back someday with, with an answer for that. But So, where this is all in Arbitrum. Arbitrum's got the highest TVL outside of ETH right now. Um, by chain, I believe. I think I think BNB actually, so Binance Smart Chain or BNB, BNC, whatever you want to call it, um, has a higher TVL. But um, let's go. Let's just go to overall chains real quick because I, I gotta I gotta prove this. Um, let's go to I think chain yeah chains. So overall chains, oh, Tron, I'm sorry, I forgot Tron. Tron is higher uh, from a TVL standpoint, but it has been around quite a bit longer. I think Tron's been around since like 2015. So of all the EVM chains, and Tron actually might be an EVM. I'm, I'm not super familiar with it, to be honest, so let's skip it. Did it go to Tron? No. All right. So let's get back to chains here. Ethereum obviously has the biggest TVL, by far. Um, you know they don't they don't list Bitcoin here because it doesn't have DeFi. So DeFi Llama is a reference here. Fifty eight billion dollars in TVL on Etherscan uh, on Ethereum. Eight eight billion almost in in BSC. Um, but like half the world, you know, Western world, uh, at least America, can't really access BSC all that well. So um, it's limited. Arbitrum is coming up with 2.5 billion. Polygon, Polygon can't even touch it, man. Polygon's like lagging behind, in my opinion here. So Polygon's been around longer. Definitely, um, you know, I, I think should. Like if it, if it was a, a shoulda, Polygon should. You know, based on, on asset price too, like Arbitrum doesn't even have a token yet, so it's hard to compare. In fact, I'm, you know, everybody should be airdrop farming on Arbitrum. I don't, if you're not, you know, like, what are you doing? But, um, again, not financial advice, guys, but, you know, do with you as you will. Uh, Avalanche is higher than Polygon. Avalanche has been around longer. You know, um, it is an EVM chain. It's Ethereum compatible. But it's not a layer two like Arbitrum is. Arbitrum, Polygon, Optimism, all layer twos. And uh, Optimism has dropped its token, and that's probably why TVL has dropped, to be honest with you. I think a lot of people are farming Arbitrum, but things like GMX don't haven't shown up yet on Optimism. So there's there's just these massive TVL uh, protocols on Arbitrum that are going gangbusters because because they just don't exist anywhere else. So um, now Avalanche, <clears throat> GMX is on Avalanche. So I mean, it, it, it makes sense. Um, GMX doesn't make sense so much on Ethereum. You would you would pay so many fees um, to 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 do the trading that it just doesn't make sense right now. So because um, every time you make uh, make a trade, you're you're gonna have a little bit of gas fee because it's all on chain. So. Um, Arbitrum is where it's at, and GMX, in my opinion, is where it's at. Um, now let's talk about <clears throat> the biggest competitor, in my mind, to uh, to GMX right now um, on Arbitrum in particular, and that is the newly released uh, Vila Exchange. And Vila is just been open to public beta. Um, you know, it's it's working like an alpha for the most part, guys. They're making all kinds of changes left and right here, but um, they've got <clears throat> they've got trading view uh you know built in which is awesome to uh to their trading platform um you can stake now staking um vlp which is just like glp it's vila um lp just like gmx is glp or um, gmx lp but it's completely usdc based so you have to um, when you when you buy liquidity inside a uh, Vila, you're not getting exposure to other assets. You're just getting exposure to stables, um, which is uh, uh, currently just USDC, which might make some people nervous. I'm not sure, but I did ape into this because there's um, 
up an airdrop confirmed so I have um, in fact there was a big uh, staking like hyper vila thing here where um, these tiers different tiers make different APRs um, as long as you hold your your VLP for a while so I'm actually I got in at this tier 5 Tier 5 opened during the public beta just a couple days ago. I think it was on the 9th that it opened and uh, did get a chance to uh, participate there. So I am making 102% on, uh, on my USDC, which is insane. Um, and uh, I'm going to make yeah, 101.5 APR currently. This is a, this is a variable APR. A couple days ago, it was like at you know 75%, but I think they're seeing the trading volume that's uh, increasing that uh, that that APR. And again, you're you're providing liquidity, you're you're uh, making the trading possible on the uh, the Vila exchange. So when you go and uh, trade on here, the uh, the 30x lever leverage is uh, supplied by those who are. I mean, you, you have to put in your collateral, but the the rest of the collateral, the the liquidity that makes the uh, 30x possible, and um, is is provided by those VLP tokens. So <clears throat> VLP, no exposure to ETH or Bitcoin, just uh, stable coins, um, in particular USDC. And um, there's going to be some great rewards here. I do think Vila could um, grow to be an extremely high TVL. In fact, I did bring this up. Uh, Vila is not listed in here um, just yet. Let me see if I can find Vila real quick um, overall. I think it, no, it's not even on. Let's go, let's go to the overview just to make sure I'm not just, just searching chains here. Yeah, Vila is not even listed yet in DeFi Llama, which is just sad. Um, there are a couple things that take a little while to get to DeFi Llama, which it is what it is, guys. Um, I believe, what's, I don't remember what TVL is. It might even say in Vila. Let's go back to Vila real, real quick. Let's go to stake. I, I want to say it was in here. <clears throat> nah, I'm, that's going to take too much time to find it, but I, it's, you know, marginal in comparison to the, uh, the TVL of GMX. GMX TVL um, is is over a billion dollars now, which is insane. Let's real quick look at GMX because I want to I want to see how much this has grown just in the last. Yeah, we just we just went over a billion dollars in TVL. In fact, it's fluctuating around one billion right now. <clears throat> when it launched on on AVAX, it was at a 300, 300 million TVL, and, and it's you know, more than tripled since. <coughs> Pardon me. So, crushing it right now, right? Nine hundred million dollars on Arbitrum, another million, hundred million on Avalanche, uh, breaking, uh, breaking chains right now, guys. So, <coughs> GMX is the number one as far as derivative trading goes um, in 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 terms of uh, TVL. What else is available? Well, Gains Network is trying. <clears throat> Gains, I think, was originally la uh, launched on Polygon. So let's let's look at Gains real quick. Um, Gains is a little simpler. I think it's because it's been a, around a little bit longer. Um, it just doesn't have the quite the same uh, model, and um, you can you can stake GNS, which. I believe is actually I don't even think is the liquidity token I think it's the uh, the the you know um, governance token. There's some old pools I think uh, these were related to um, <clears throat> liquidity at some point. I'm not sure. Don't have a lot of um, knowledge about Gains Network guys, so forgive me. Um, I don't know what this Dune dashboard is going to tell us, but. Uh, uh, trade volume, that's cool. Total total traders. Um, trade volume's pretty high. Um, that's in the 
billions of dollars, 28 billion, it's pretty high. Um, <clears throat> but that's total, so that's not like in the last year or in the last month or anything like that. Um, trading fees, it's pretty good. Let's see if there's a GMX one that actually gives us. So let's let's go, let's open up a Dune um, dashboard and see if we can't find uh, GMX here. It's probably going to be, <laughs> I was wondering if I didn't even have to, uh, GMX analytics Arbitrum. This is just Arbitrum. So let's see. <clears throat> Market cap, um, pool size. All right, what else do we got here? It's not quite giving us the same price chart. Don't care. I'm looking for volume, right? Um, AUM keeps growing. That's good. Uh, vault tokens, what are GLP um, inflow charts? Those are good things to look into. So always take a, a crack at looking at Dune if you want to get a deep dive into uh, what's going on but let's see holding um, so it looks like some I'm not sure what that is change in holdings change in holdings these are all more like the financials behind um, open interest short interest gosh there's so much here um, Liquidity, gosh, there's tons of stuff here. So, margin fees, uh, margin users, uh, margin volume. Wow, 75 billion in margin volume. That's insane. Um, yeah, there's almost like too much information here. Uh, swap trades. I'm trying to find like one to one. All right, so fees. Um, It doesn't look like we're getting swap volume, cumulative swap. I'm just not seeing a one to one statistics here. That's too bad. It's hoping to do a side by side comparison, but it's not going to happen. Um, trust me, guys, uh, just the TVL involved um, makes GMX pretty substantial. I do think you might see. Uh, more trading volume possibly on gains just because it's been around longer um, and is <clears throat> on polygon but I don't think that's the case um, are there any more stats on here no okay so um, gains network I do believe is the second largest although uh, DYDX is massive on in TVL on the Ethereum chain but again you're getting some massive fees on on the ETH chain and um, GMX has just flown by DYDX as far as derivatives. Um, I haven't checked out uh, DeFi chain loans. It's on its own chain. Um, so I'm going to just skip over that. I per because be I'm looking for optimism Arbitrum. So the next largest, right, is Perpetuals. And this it does live on optimism. And I, I did want to get into what equivalents there are available on optimism before I moved on. So there are a couple. In fact, there's a GMX fork called OPX on Optimism. And looking into it, <clears throat> it looks similar, but not not the same. So the Earn tab, um, OLP, I believe, is based uh, strictly on... Um, it's got a 32% APR, so that is it is higher. That's cool. Um, I don't know what the breakdown is with um, with the assets here. So is is OLP built out of uh, wrapped Bitcoin and Ethereum and um, and uh, stables like GMX? I wouldn't be surprised if it was, since it is a fork. That would make sense. Um, so APR and GL or on OLP, really smart. But I'm not finding it in other places. It hasn't been widely adopted yet. You can't find it in sentiment. You can't find it in olive. You can't find it like 
in other places that you're able to find GLP staking, like um, Rage Trade has a uh, GLP options vault as well, um, which is completely full. So um, good luck trying to get in it. But uh, that's why I didn't mention it in in my earlier uh, bit about Olive and and uh, sentiment. But um, TBLs are, are are yields better on Olive anyway than it is on Rage Trade. So um, I'm happy to be in Olive. But I digress. Um, OLP and OPX uh, could be cool. Um, hard fork um, on built for optimism. Um, I don't think it's getting quite the volume. Uh, the dashboard, the you know, yeah, it's it's built of the same stuff, so that's cool. Um, utilization just not super high though. Um, and uh, TVL is pretty low in, in comparison. So let's go back over to derivatives. I think OPX is like way down here. Yeah, so um, they've only got 600,000 TVL. And that's just a new place where if it's not a million or more guys, I'm not sure. Um, although it's a it's a hard fork, um, it hasn't shown its, its ability to uh, blow up yet although it's it's up to 28 percent in the last 30 days that's that's considerable or uh, yeah one month so 30 days ish um, OPX could be an up-and-comer <clears throat> we could see it be uh, you know the GMX of optimism right because it is a fork just a straight fork copy of a copy right but um, other other uh, interesting things on optimism because I am trying to I, I highly recommend and personally I'm trying to uh, diversify my portfolio over different chains different assets um, but similar uh, strategies so I don't have to like think of a bunch of different strategies and deploy them over multiple chains I'd like to have some consistency of strategy but over multiple chains and different assets so that you know, somebody gets rugged over here or somebody gets like a bridge gets exploited on um, Arbitrum. I'm not exposed to it on Optimism, right? Hopefully not, you know. So um, so what I'm trying to do right now is trying to find the best liquidity uh, provider uh, situation like that of GMX and, uh, you know, Vila on Optimism. And Perpetual uh, Protocol so far is my most interesting comparison i haven't looked into pika so i'm i am going to do that um it's growing significantly 36 percent up um, over the last 30 days um, and perpetual isn't growing quite as much um, because it is a little bit hmm, i i want to say i don't think it's a uh, a fork um so if you if you click on uh, some of these it'll actually say like fork of if it's in like if we go to <clears throat> let's go to OPX inside of DeFi Llama here I do think it says yeah it's forked from GMX so um, it'll tell you if, if it's a fork so a lot of these are going to be forks of something else like compound or um, Aave right but uh, let's go to into perpetual so Perpetual um, is similar in what it does, but it doesn't have the same structure that uh, that GMX has. So let's let's look at Perpetual. I think I have it open over here. Perpetual, yeah. So your uh, liquidity is provided in all these different pools. So you're you're providing single. Um, <clears throat> It's kind of single-sided, uh, like liquidity, but um, I know on the back of Perpetual, you're actually using Uniswap as the um, the liquidity provider for the trading platform. So um, if you go to trade, it, it'll look, you know, somewhat similar, right? To uh, it looks like Trading View is actually built in here as well. <clears throat> um, you got your long, your short. Um, just like GMX or Vila, you have a very similar dashboard. Um, and then you have your, uh, your different trades, but then if you want to pool, 
you have the same assets that you can trade in the in the pool as well. So you're you're actually providing liquidity to Uniswap, and on the back end, Perpetual is using Uniswap liquidity, um, from what I understand, to uh, um, or the uh, a very similar. It, it might it might be Uniswap. It might be like a a fork of Uniswap in the background running the liquidity for the program. Um, look, get get into the research if you really care that much about these sort of things. But you are making some possible massive gains um, as far as APRs, but it all depends on your how tight you set your liquidity. So um, <clears throat> um, if you add liquidity, I think there's like a uh, yeah. Here's here's this dashboard. It's really interesting. I, I don't have my wallet connected OP, OP, so it's gonna look a little different. But um, I'll have to change it. Otherwise, it's going to bug me. Let's go over to OP or Optimism in my MetaMask so that we can not be annoyed. Um, all right, connect, please. Get rid of this nonsense. So <clears throat> it's still going to give me nonsense. Anyway, I... Um, You're using USDC to to purchase your um, your liquidity here too, which is really interesting because you're actually providing liquidity to the ETH pool with USDC. Um, I just don't I just don't think it's very elegant. There's some cool things about it. Um, so if you set your uh, if you actually go to like advanced, I think there's an advanced. Uh, yeah, the advanced tab here. It's you're basically setting. Um, min and maxes so that your USDC that you provide um, or I believe you can provide ETH on this back end side um, and you have like this range essentially just like you would in Uniswap v3 of like where you're uh, providing liquidity or providing pooling uh, rewards to a certain range and the, the tighter the range I understand the less um, impermanent loss is is possible so that's the nice thing about uh, Perpetual, and gives you a range to be a liquidity provider. It's using a different model. Obviously, um, you know it's not single-sided like Vila, where you're just in USDC. It's not multi as much as uh, GMX is with ETH and multiple stables plus wrapped Bitcoin. But um, I'm just liking the model better, and the I don't think you're getting trading fees as much as you in in uh in perpetual as you are in gmx and that's what really has blown up gmx i think is because on the glp side you're just able to um to 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 really uh own essentially part of the protocol because your incentives are so are much more like that of an actual um dex and uh actually actually owning a portion of it with that liquidity so if that makes sense feel free to put any questions in the com in the comments guys I do read everything and I do follow up on everything as best as I can now the other thing I need to talk about in optimism is is synthetics but synthetics is like a universe so um, synthetics is the parent company and then you have uh, perpetual trading on Quinta, somebody who wants to go and trade on on the synthetics platform, you're like, why am I going over to Quinta? Well, Quinta is the trading platform. It's a completely different, you know, looks like a completely different um, website. You know, it doesn't mention anything about synthetics besides the fact that you see it powered by synthetics, right? But 25x leverage um, possible on. Uh, on Quenta, but you're uh, you're using um, the synths that you create within uh, that have been created, I should say, inside of Synthetics. So a um, little bit different system there. Obviously, you can provide liquidity, um, single-sided liquidity inside of Synthetics by wrapping Ethereum inside of uh, Synthetic ETH which um, does give you some pretty significant um, rewards. In fact, I do have some synth ETH 
um, on mainnet uh, that I've staked along, um, not staked, I've, I've, I've pooled alongside some staked ETH, or wrapped ETH, it's like wrapped ETH to synth ETH in curve, wrapped up inside a concentrator making like 10% on ETH in that regard. So <clears throat> my, my long-term goal is to have as much of the theorem as possible because I do think it's the future of finance. I mean, I wouldn't call this channel All Things ETH if I wasn't a, a Super Bowl on ETH, right? But um, I want to make gains in these, in these. I, I want to have other gains. I want to hedge my ETH rewards with, um, or my ETH accounts with some, um, some high APR stable uh, slash ETH related assets, right? So I'm doing a lot of ETH, uh, you know, and stable um, APRs. So in sense, the, to break this all down and distill it into one um, reason why I'm doing the strategy is because I'm trying to make as much as possible on ETH related um, products as I can. And so in synthetics, I'm taking ETH, I'm borrowing USDT, USDT and I'm um, investing in GLP, which has ETH exposure as well as the uh, the stable exposure and it's making, um, you know, 20% <clears throat> on my borrowed USDC. But my underlying asset is still ETH, right? And, and wrap stake ETH at that. In side of Olive, you know, it was a little different. I'm, I did put some money into GMX, bought some GLP, and I'm trying to make money on the GLP. At least that GLP has some ETH exposure, right? Um, this is more um, just because I, you know, a 33% APR is just hard to hard to not jump into, right? But um, ultimately, I do think that ETH will surpass this, even at a um, over a year, over two years, over three years. The price of ETH is going to go appreciate so much that I do think it will um, eclipse that 33%. Um, APR over the long run, but it is a hedge, right? And it does have ETH exposures and GLP. So I'm making half the gains or some of the gains that I would in ETH inside of GLP, and then I'm making 33% on top of that inside of all of uh, wrapped up in GLP. So um, do with, with that what you will. Um, the reason why I have synthetic ETH is to have an ETH uh, LSD paired against another ETH and making gains on top. I'm making 10% in that regard, but the appreciation that I see coming for ETH is greater than that 10%, and I'm just trying to compound my gains. So all that said, these are all different strategies to make me more ETH. I will buy more ETH with USDC. I will, I will um, you know, eventually sell GLP to buy more ETH in, in, in places of, you know, where I, f I feel it necessary. So, or for, for whatever reason, if, if GMX were to go the way of the dinosaur, um, I would I would sell my GLP and, and purchase ETH probably immediately, um, just because I'm so, uh, no matter where ETH is gonna be, it's probably gonna be higher in the future, is my thesis. So, with that, sorry this is a little bit longer of a video today, but um, I really needed a deep dive into what I'm doing in Arbitrum with GMX and GLP, what I'm doing with uh, Vila, uh, possible airdrop there. So don't don't shy on that. Um, and then uh, um, what's possible on Optimism, obviously, and um, and inside of Polygon with uh, with Gains Network. Check that out. Um, super bullish GLP, super bullish uh, ETH and Vila, and um, because a GLP is available in Sentiment and Olive, I'm using those to compound gains, guys. And uh, um, check out my referral links in the description to get into some of these and save fees on GMX, um, save fees in Vila, and get a referral directly linked to Olive as well so you can stack GLP, get an extra, you know, 12, 